All right, all right. Beanie Talks with Friends, episode 90. Wow. Nine I'm honored. zero. I'm honored. I have a wonderful guest here. How you doing, Keith? Good. How are you, sir? Good. Keith Griffin, episode 90. This is going to be a good one. We're in the, the ninth season of That's Beanie right. Talks with Friends. <laughs> we go 10, 10 a season. Makes sense, wow. right? Decades. Hard, hard worker. Yep. 10 a year. Yeah. 10 a year. <laughs> it's tough. But I'm very happy. My name is Eric Feeney, founder and president of Friends of Feeney. Our mission is to help children and families that need assistance after heartbreak or tragedy. I use this podcast, Feeney Talks with Friends, and I talk to wonderful people that do great things in the community. And Keith does a lot. Photographer. Writer. Mm -hmm. Deacon. Deacon. That's right. Deacon Keith or Deacon Griffin? No, Deacon Keith. Deacon Keith. Yeah, we tend to be a little bit more informal. Yeah, we had I had a rabbi on the show. That's great. And now we are touching on all religions. Or two. Yeah. Or two. We're, no, we're getting them all. <laughs> okay. We got 90 more episodes to True. go. How many religions are there? That's a good question. I don't know. Because there's sex within religion. So. And what religion uh, is a deacon for? Catholic. Catholic. Catholic and how long Church. have you been Catholic? How long have I been Catholic? Since I was baptized November 1962. So, Quite a little almost bit. Almost 61 years. Yeah. Nice. Next month. Well, whenever this airs. Do you want to tell us about uh, what inspired you to become a deacon? It all started, actually, I took a Parent Leadership Training Institute class, which is run by the Family Resource Center, which is part of the bridge here in West Hartford. And it was a three to four month, four month, what they do is they empower parents to become more active members of the community. And there's an academic aspect to it. We had to put together papers, right, complete a project. And so that made me realize that I could, I'd been out of school for a long time, so I could handle doing academic work again. And then uh, my former parish priest, Monsignor Mata, over at St. Mark on South Quaker Lane, suggested I get involved in a program called the, the Lay Ministry Program, which is part of the Archdiocese of Hartford. That was a two-year program. Went through that, got a... That's not deaconship. That's not deaconship, no. that's What would that what, get you? What it does is it trains you to handle different aspects of parish life. I went in it originally to do the bereavement ministry, but then they asked me to do the baptism ministry at the church. So they train you how to do various ministries that lay people can do within the Catholic church. And what's nice is that it's for men and women. And it's just designed to create the future leaders of the church, the non-ordained leaders of the church, maybe got involved with parish councils. Uh, I became a lector, an extraordinary minister of the Eucharist, uh, different things within within the church. So it gives you a good foundation. So then when I got through that and it was involved in ministry within the church for a couple of years at St. Mark, I knew deacons, and my godfather, Bob Hilliard, is one of the original seven deacons in New England, and he was ordained 50 years ago and is still an active deacon wow. at the age of 89, maybe, 88, 89. So he's been doing this for 50 years. That's my Bob. Bob. That's your Bob, yes. Bob. Yeah. Bob. Yep. I did adult a, confirmation. Okay through St. Bridget and St. Helena. Mm -hmm. uh, my girls were young, so maybe 10 years ago. Okay. And I had would meet with Bob, and we did I did readings prior to meeting with Bob. And uh, Bob's, in, yeah, it was, uh, nice. I looked forward to meeting with him. He was very knowledgeable. He, we had wonderful conversations. Oh, great. great person. I love seeing, I still see him at Elmwood Bakery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, church occasionally. Yep. So Bob's, that's your godfather. That's my godfather, yep. Get out. My dad's first cousin. I think I knew that. And, wow. And I'll, I'll turn the question on you. What made you decide to get confirmed as an adult? Good. Um, my wife it was a practicing Catholic for years. I mm -hmm. uh, went to a Catholic school when she lived in Virginia or Pennsylvania. And then, you know, our we had children. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to make sure that her our religion was part of our family. Okay. Um, so our kids, we went to church on Sundays and then when she would get up to g receive communion, mm -hmm. I kind of like, you know, you go into the aisle, yes. let everyone pass and then <laughs> sit and then, you know, you're like, oh man, 
So I don't know, just to maybe fit in and be a full family, I felt sure. that, uh, you know, to receive communion as a family would be cool. And, you nice. Because I, I, don't, I don't know if the girls looked at me like, Dad, why aren't you going up? Or Sure. You know, but um, that was me. And okay. I, I tell that story. My wife's like, really? That's your reason? <laughs> but... Um, but now, you know, practicing Catholic, we mm -hmm. go to church. Uh, You're over at St. Peter Claver? Peter it? Claver now, yeah. which uh, Father, uh, what's his name? Father. Um, is it Father Ford? Chris Ford. Ford, yep. Yeah. Yep. Father Ford is awesome. He's named that, well, I remember Chris Ford. He, Chris Ford hit the first three pointer in the NBA. Oh. He, played for, <laughs> he played for the Celtics. Okay. So Chris, his name's Chris Ford. Uh, <laughs> Father Ford, awesome. Yeah, very engaging mm -hmm. uh, sermons, and not, they're not sermons. Um, but uh no. homilies 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 yeah uh so yeah homilies are tied to the gospel sermons they're just when you preach about an issue okay yep. i was just reminded about that recently did bob teach me that in adult confirmation probably not come on I, bob. that's more a deacon thing <laughs> is bob gonna watch this i hope so bob if i post it on facebook he's a, a facebook fan so well i want to thank bob uh it was really wonderful to sit with you and talk i learned so much again we had wonderful conversations uh, you're a good human. You're a good friend, and mm -hmm. uh, you're a good Godfather, I guess. Too. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Look what you did there. That's Keith. right. Yeah, he was my ultimate inspiration. Really? For becoming a deacon. Yeah. He was a deacon for fifty years. Still is. Yeah. So deacons can be married with kids. Yes. Uh, deacons can as have long their, as they're their married. Job. As long as they're married with kids before they get ordained, because once you're ordained, you can't get married. Not sure why, but that's but just church law. What if you had? Can law. you have another kid? Oh, if, sure. As a deacon? Uh, if you you're married, married, yeah. yeah. They would frown upon it if you had another kid outside of wedlock or something. But no, you can, get, you can have more children. And let's talk about your outfit, a little show and tell, sure. being a teacher. <laughs> uh, what's that called? Exactly. And, well, these are my vestments. Um, the white garment, is, I'm not, now noticing it's dirty, I have to wash it, is uh, called an alb, A-L-B. Underneath it, you can't see it. There's I'm wearing a green stole, and you wear a stole as a symbol of ordination. Uh, deacons wear theirs over their left shoulder, and priests wear theirs over their. It goes over both sides, mm -hmm. and supposedly deacons wear it because they hold the gospel with their right hand, so that's why it's over their left shoulder, so it won't interfere. I, that's what I've read. Gotcha. And uh, because one of our responsibilities is preaching the gospel each week at Mass. And then I'm wearing a Dalmatic, which is a, an ornate vestment, uh, typically only worn on Holy Days, special Masses, by deacons. Um, I know. I love the pattern and the green, yeah. of course. Yeah, my it reminds daughter. me of St. Patrick's Day, you know? That's right, yeah. <laughs> um. Bought it from, it, this was made in Maine, handmade in Maine. How much? How much? This is $1,000. Wow. I know. Yeah. But I got it on sale. Got the discount? Got the discount, yep. And I'm actually, this week I'm picking up a violet one, also on sale. And the only difference you can see is priests wear a similar garment. It's called a chasuble. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have sleeves, but I'm pointing this out, but Deacon's vestments, the Dalmatic has sleeves. So that's the difference. We wear our stole differently, and the our over garments, our over vestments, ours have sleeves, theirs don't. Again, another story. Uh, Deacon's were really started... Not too long after the apostles, it was it was our role to take care of the widows and children, and we would handle the uh, finances of the various communities, Christian communities that were set up. And supposedly we had sleeves so we could hide the money, <laughs> <laughs> keep the money tucked up, and then dispense it as needed. But the priests didn't have the same need, so they have open sleeves. It's all open, so. That's so how many difference. colors do you own right now? Just green? Just green. And I'm getting the on second violet. one, violet, for um it's worn a lot more towards around Christmas time. Yeah, they decorate the altar in purple mm -hmm. for like a, a time. For oh, Advent. Uh, Easter, no? Uh, Advent. Boy, you tricked me up. Definitely for 
Advent. Advent, then. And then, that's a good question. I'll have to think about Easter. What other colors mm. do they make the vestments? White. Uh, and also there's red. And red's really limited opportunities to wear red. I say that uh, as we tape this. All Souls Day is coming up, and that's when you remember all the souls of your parish who passed away last year. That's a mass where you would wear red. I have a red stole, so <clears throat> I typically wear the album and the stole. And what's the stole? Is that a string that hangs down? Or no, it... um, that is the goes over my shoulder. Oh, like a um, it it almost looks like think of an English scout. Almost? It's like a sash. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yep, and then the uh, rope. So you tie a string or yep. rope. Okay. It's called a cincture. 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 Yep, and that goes around the uh, the waist. Very cool. Yep. So that takes a little bit to get ready. No, you've been. A, I went to your deaconship. That was a wonderful mass. Yes, it was. It was like uh, it was in the same place I did my adult confirmation. Oh, okay, great. Uh, Saint Joseph's final, Cathedral. You know, like sure. final ceremony. Yep. Yours was a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> How many deacons that day? Eight, including myself. Yeah, very nice. From all over the archdiocese. And Some the from Archbishop, as far right? South as right? The Archbishop of Hartford. Yep. Archbishop Blair. Yep. Did the ordination. You guys kneeled. You guys laid down. Prostrate, yeah. You, you had a whole a lot going on. It was yeah, very okay. interesting. Yeah. So I appreciate the invitation. Oh yeah, I'm glad and you I was it. really glad I went. And it was you had a party after. Party, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so very cool. It was nice. It was it was a nice day. Nice to be able to share it with my wife because and my daughters. It's you really depend a lot on your family while you're preparing, and then once you get ordained. Yeah. Because she makes a lot of sacrifices. Well, I got a question, and we'll first shout out a couple. Luna Pizza stick around; they're a sponsor. I know. We're here at uh, Keating Agency on Ten Arapahoe Road. Keating Agency. Thank you, the Keatings. Uh, Ryan was episode twenty-three. Oh. He's the Michael Jordan of insurance. Nice. We're, again, we're yes. on Ten Arapahoe Road, eight six zero five two one one four two zero. Keating Agency, beautiful place. We're in the I know, office. I've been by here a thousand times. First time inside. Right, first time inside. Yeah. I was here in the same room. They did a podcast. Ryan was a host, and oh, right. they did Weha Talks. <laughs> it was a great, great podcast. It was like my first um, time to talk about Friends of Feeney. Oh, okay. And then the last one is going to be, we'll talk about, is West Hartford Lock. Oh, nice. All right. So three keys, West Hartford Lock. See what I did there? Three keys that nice. make you a great deacon. What are three keys that make you a great deacon? I think empathy is important. <clears throat> Just being open to talking to people and open to their ideas. There's this perception that the Catholic Church is closed off to new ideas. It's not true. We're not. We're open up to all types of things. Um, I've been told I'm a good public speaker, so that's key when I'm doing homilies each Sunday and Saturday, vigil mass. I do preach the gospel. And just, I like people. And I think that's a key element for yeah. doing this. You know, just, I like meeting new people, having conversations, finding out about them, finding out about their faith. Information. So empathy, public speaking, yep. and being a people person. Being a people person. Maybe maybe that's combined with empathy. I'm not sure about just No, you are like quite people. The, yeah, you are definitely a, a people person. Um, Which is odd because I'm an introvert. I could I could curl up on a couch and read a book all day and be perfectly content. And then, in your homilies, do you use current events to hook reader the the audience in, or do you? Do sure. You... Sometimes there's a combination. I just did a homily a couple of weeks ago related to World Hunger Day, which is the third Monday in October each year. So I was able to talk a little bit about the hunger situation in the world, local, locally, I mean, in the United States. And then the fact that I'm at Christ the King Parish in Mothersfield, and they do an amazing job whenever there's food drives, feeding the hungry. So that was one event I uh, was able to bring into a homily. Another homily um, actually told a story about the basic theme of the gospel was that you put Jesus and God first in your life, and you put it ahead of your family, and tough message for some people to swallow because they're like, no, you put family first. 
but I was able to talk about a, a woman I know who has a couple of children and the son has celiac. But so she has to go through extraordinary measures to get him communion. He actually has to take the wine, even though he's not legally old enough to drink, but it's allowed. And so I said, but that's a case though where she puts God first to show how important it is to have faith. So she's raising her son, showing that God is important. She loves him, but she also wants to make sure that God's in his life at his young age. So there's, I try and... So being a public speaker, speak up. You should do a speak up. What's that? Speak up is like the moth. You get on stage oh, and Oh, I talk actually for did one. Minutes. I did one at uh, Charter Oak. Had, had a couple of those. Oh, really? And I was fortunate enough to participate in one of those. It was back when Juan Melian was... Our friend Juan Melian was yep. principal, now over at Sedgwick. And it was before COVID, so I, I think he may have... And then Juan got transferred oh, to nice. Sedgwick. So, but it was, uh, I think it was called Charter Oak Speaks. Yeah, because uh, Speak Up game right now, it's called First, Last, Best, Worst. And you you started to explain some homilies. Okay. What was your best one, your worst one, your first one, and your last one? Or how many homilies have you done? I've only been preaching homilies since June. June July. So my first one was at, as an ordained deacon was at St. Mark. What they do is they have you go back to your parish and it pretty much focused around love and how important love was from your family and how so many people had supported me in my quest to become a deacon. Quest is there a time cap? Way. Is there a maximum or minimum time that they want to have your homilies set up? Well, the ideal is seven minutes. And anything over seven minutes, people stop paying attention. I had a priest in one class who was proud of the fact he could talk for 18 minutes and not lose people's attention. And none of us believed it, <laughs> <laughs> especially the priests. They said, no, you can't have an 18-minute homily. So seven, it's about, yeah, give or take a thousand words. Okay. So you're not First one at St. Mark's. First one at St. Mark's. About Mark. love. About love, yep. Last one was um, just the one I was talking about related to World Food Hunger Day. Was that World this past Hunger Sunday? Day. A couple Sundays ago. <clears throat> and then the best one, it, uh, somewhat immodest, immodestly, it was the world hunger one, but I presented it at as part of my homiletics class, which homiletics is preparing you to give a homily. And the teacher said he thought it was the best homily of that particular class. Very so nice. It's a good compliment. Kind of, yeah, I was kind of happy with that. And my worst? Huh. I've really only done least favorite, maybe least uh, least favorite. Um, <laughs> well, it's interesting. I was talking about the woman who put God first in that message, and typically when I preach, I preach at four masses: one on Saturday, three on Sunday. I preached a slightly different version on Saturday. My pastor didn't really like it. He got I can't remember. His, he had some quibble with it so i got up early sunday morning and rewrote it and then uh oh i can remember he thought i was focusing on trying to focus on too many things that's what it was and then so i got up sunday morning and rewrote it and he wanted you to streamline the message a little more or yep take more focus on one aspect than the other and then it's when i was studying to be a deacon other deacons would tell me, don't worry, the Holy Spirit will come down and help you with your sermons. I was skeptical. <laughs> but somehow between Saturday night and Sunday morning, I was able to come up with a new way to rewrite that gospel. Uh, not that gospel. <laughs> deacons don't write gospels, we write homilies. Rewrite that homily. And so I, I feel like there was some presence guiding me to rewrite it and I think that was it. You know, and, and then it was well received and the person I wrote about uh, happened to be in church that day and was very touched when I explained later that actually when the person heard it, they knew who I, knew I was talking about that family. So, Can you share? Kind of touching. Who the family is? Yeah. I'd prefer not to. 
understood. Yeah. Understandable. <laughs> Understandable. Not not somebody from Western. <clears throat> gotcha. So very cool. You got anything yeah. else? Anything else? Yes, I can. I can bless you as a podcast. Come on. I know. That'll be a first. Yeah. <laughs> First for me, too. I haven't blessed any other podcast yet. <laughs> Real simple. There's a couple things I have to read. So, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May God, who sent us his Son as the herald of salvation, and who continually pours the Holy Spirit of truth into our hearts, be with you all. And also with you. The wisdom of God is beyond imagining, and his goodness a boundless treasure. He unfailingly enlightens our minds to open up new and better means of sharing with each other all kinds of information, ideas, and aspirations. The discoveries of technology, if used properly, can be of great service to the human family, not only to bring help in times of need, but also as resources for education and entertainment, and even for our spreading and building up the kingdom of God. So before I do the reading, Obviously, you've used your talents to be a great service to the human family. I know. Education, I heard. Education, you heard. Yeah, I mean, we think Helping of... Helping people in need, I heard. Yeah, we think of Friends of Feeney raised over $100,000, probably over 120 by now. And yep. How many families? 130. No, 130 not, families, yeah. So. No, $130,000. Oh, 130000 Over 35 families. 35 families. Yeah, so... That's very fitting. You're doing good stuff. Yes, that's... When I saw that, made me really think of you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read a quick reading from the letter to the Philippians by St. Paul, where he says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. I'm going to read from Psalm 8. When I behold your heaven, behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place, what is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands putting all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the sea. Their message goes out through all the world, their news to the ends of the earth. The earth is full of your creatures, O Lord. Lord God Almighty, we humbly praise you for your enlighten, for you enlighten and inspire those who, by probing the powers implanted in creation, develop the work of your hands in wonderful ways. Look with favor on your servants, who use the technology discovered by long research, enable them to communicate truth, to foster love, to uphold justice and right, and to provide enjoyment. Let them promote and support that peace between peoples, which Christ the Lord brought from heaven for he lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May God, the creator of all things, who never, cease, never ceases to work his wonders among us, enlighten our minds, so that we may know him more deeply and strive always to spread his truth and his peace. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> may all God, Almighty God bless you. Let's go. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I have blessed Amen. your podcast. Ooh, the podcast is blessed. Yes, it's exciting for me, actually. I, I enjoy blessing things. I've blessed offices. Uh, I've blessed uh, animals. Uh, my mom was sick. And she passed away recently. I was able to give her a blessing for the sick before she passed. One thing deacons can't do is we can't, do, we can't anoint the sick because it involves confession and we can't deacons like to joke we can hear confessions we're just not bound to keep them secret <laughs> like oh, a priestess so but you can give advice oh sure yeah. you well, can hear confessions no we, we can't hear confessions okay but if somebody wants to confess something to us 
we're not bound by any right of secrecy. It means, so if somebody <coughs> confessed something to me, I say this thoroughly tongue-in-cheek, I could then turn around and tell you the whole story because we're not bound, but, but as, priests, as a decent human being. But priests the, don't, yeah. don't have to tell, right? Nope. No, can't. Yeah, can't. Priests can't even discuss a confession with another priest it's because they're acting as Jesus' designate on earth. So it's really from... Now, hypothetically, Jesus, yes. if they uh, open up and say some things that may be illegal, mm -hmm. is that also bound? Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. There's, uh, they can't be compelled to testify. That's like lawyer-client Confidentiality. Yeah, confidentiality. Yep. The... Uh, uh, it, it's it's sacred. It just can't be broken. Uh, a priest might counsel somebody because confession, part of the right of reconciliation, is counseling. And you can be counseled maybe to seek help, turn yourself in, you know, if it's particularly egregious. But a priest could not drop a dime, <laughs> hmm. so to speak. Can't and, rat you out. No, nope, can't rat you out. So preachers aren't rats. Nope. They're not snitches. <laughs> not snitches. A couple yeah. more questions. Sure. Holy water question, yep. book of blessing question. Sure. And then maybe another one. Mm -hmm. First, when was the book of blessing? Is that Has that been updated? Because yes. to bless podcasts, those yep. haven't been around for some, quite some yeah, time. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure the exact date, but it, it's... This is 1989, but I know this has been added. It's added and updated since then. Yeah, but this... Not quite With sure the talk of that, technology but, and stuff. Yep, that includes technology. Okay, um, then well, holy one. water. Yes. Um, what makes it holy? What do you do to the holy water? Because you can make holy water now, right? Yes. How do you do that? Um, it's easy. There's another blessing in here for blessing holy water outside of mass. Typically, holy water gets blessed for baptisms, and. It's also used at funerals and other occasions, but and then no, no. okay, and because the the casket will be blessed with water. I'm not afraid to ask silly questions. No, no. But can it be Poland Springs? Can it be tap water? Yep, I I take tap water. West Hartford if, tap water. Yep. The uh, if, if you ever happen to be over in our over our house sometime, it is I have holy water sitting in a Tupperware container. <laughs> so because is it labeled? That, do yes, not it drink. Is. Do not well, drink. It's, it's labeled holy water. In so, the fridge or not in the fridge? No, not in the fridge. Yeah. And then uh, because I do. And what's then the thing with the bottles. that you dip? Don't you have one of those in the house? Yeah, too. One of those two. Yeah, it's just. What's it's, that called? Um, I'm drawing a blank, but it, uh -oh. it's just a, a for holy water. It's just a holy water holder. I'm sure it has now, a much more a magnificent name. You got me a few times. Got the three water. Times. So the, three the name times. Name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ah, yep. yep. Gotcha. Is why we do it that way. And I want to tell a real quick story about blessings. Uh, my uh, daughter, my older daughter, has joked that I can't bless anim animals anymore because I'm 50 50. <laughs> because I was at her friend's house, blessed a dog, somewhat rambunctious dog, ornery dog, who since I blessed it this over a month ago has chilled out. There you go. Yeah, but I blessed the family cat and it died a week later. So mm. same family. Same family, yeah. Oof. Yeah. So you're fifty so fifty. Fifty over fifty, it. yeah. So she's like, yeah, maybe not careful with those blessings. Well, I got you a gift to look at. The, what, oh. Can you explain what's going on here? Holy water. It's a key ring. Oh, very nice. Vial holder, metal ring, with an eyedropper. What's the eyedropper about? Same thing, probably to extract the holy water. From the uh, vessel, and then you would fill the. So you can keep it on your keychain. Oh, thank you. Very cool. Nice. I carry a. Uh, I keep my church keys on a deacon keychain, so I will add my church keys to this. There you go. Nice. Yep. So the uh, I, I imagine the eyedropper is just to put the holy water in there. Not to hit you with the the, the uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Like not oh, like maybe. a squirt gun. I have to double check that. Yeah. I don't know. You got me curious. Yeah, How long? Yeah, I guess you could squirt into. Oh, you could just put the holy yeah, water in a right. super soaker yeah. and just. That's right. Bless the masses. Get everybody. <laughs> How long you were going to say? Uh, does it have an expiration date? Do, does holy water expire? Not that I know of, but it has to be disposed of in a special way. 
if you spill someone like say on the kitchen floor which i've never done of course you're supposed to clean it up with a a towel not something that's disposable because then it can be washed again so okay. way it's considered cleanse and you dispose of holy water there's two ways to actually dispose of it uh each church building has a uh, back in the sacristy kind of behind the altar where we get dressed in these clothes there's a special sink that the water the pipe pours into the ground because you're really only supposed to pour holy water so this back is to like the, the holy water dispo- disposal yep at a church most churches most have it? church most catholic churches i can only speak to catholic churches have it or else you can just take it outside after a while you want to replace the holy water because you've been dipping your hands in it so you pour it into the ground return it to nature so you're not supposed to pour it down a drain you're not supposed to clean it up with a paper towel my unless I, you burn it holy water story when i got yes. my license when i was 16 years old okay my best friend jeff and brian their grandmother G- grandma Jean, mm-hmm. gave me holy water to put in my glove compartment oh nice i still have the holy water wow so that's about 28 years, 38 years. 20, I'm 44, do the math. 28. 28. Yep. So does it expire? Is it, it, I oh, mean, no, it doesn't I'm expire. Still, no, no, it's not the I same. think, thank you, Grandma Jean, for that. Hopefully I send <laughs> this to you. Thank you. Um, but uh, she was like, if you're going to be driving my grandsons around, sure. you know, I want you to be safe. And uh, I put it in the glove compartment, and I changed cars multiple times. Nice. It's currently not in the black truck, but it's in the Durango. Okay, more important. That carries your kids. Carries, it's, it's the, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I was going to give this to you anyway, so now you have one for each car. Oh, boom. See? Okay. Now I could put this in the black truck. That's right. And be safe. But thank you, Grandma Jean, again. Yeah. Um, Grandma Jean is very Grandma important. Jean has kept me safe. Grandma, yep. Grandma Jean Curtis. She's in Florida. Hopefully, we'll send this to her. Nice. Um. Her sons love the podcast. Jeff and Brian, like... How can you not? Right? It's a, it's, it just gets better every they watch episode. It all, they watch it all the time, <laughs> even though they're quick to t- point out some flaws. Okay, well... Did you watch the Irish Musician one? Sorry, I didn't get a chance yet. Okay. My You're, wife did. There was an all-time low Uh-oh. <laughs> when I asked Mark James, does he get water in the basement? I guess that's a bad question. It was... Why is you, that a bad question? I, do you get water in your basement? Am they gonna, tease me about that. Am I going to get, oh. Like, hey. Lame like, question, it, you mean? Or? It's like, yeah, it's like. Okay. It was like a kind of quiet, and then it's like, hey, Mark, <laughs> do you get water in your basement? <laughs> Were you plugging a plumber or something? Or? It, you know what I did do? I plugged that I went downstairs and went into my T-shirt. So it got, it got worse. So then after <laughs> I asked about water in the basement, I brought out like 10 shirts, T-shirts from like Waterbury 20 years ago oh, okay. to show on the podcast. So that oh. question led to showing a bunch of T-shirts. Oh, water in the basement, Waterbury. Waterbury, water in the basement. Okay. Um, hey, and that's another thing, Waterbury. You did, it, you've done it. Every podcast, someone mentions Waterbury. Oh, nice. Well done, Keith. Nice. Waterbury. Um, <laughs> and I've never been to the Basilica out there, which I hear is beautiful. Which one's that? In downtown. Waterbury, yeah, yeah, downtown. Yeah. yeah. I have to get there someday. Uh, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that the white one ac- across from the green? I believe so. What's the full name? Oh, well, yeah. okay. Church trivia. I'm horrible. One time. I can uh, make something up, but I won't. Yeah. I spent some time there during the <laughs> school during the school day. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Needed a place to go. <laughs> um, no, uh, you know, you, you are, yeah, you're a role model. You're a good guy. Um, thank you for coming on. I oh, really appreciate the blessing, the blessing. You know, I appreciate being able to give it to ninety episodes, and now we're blessed. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think episode thirty, we had, I had a Mark James Irish musician on, and okay. I also had a James Mark oh. from the camp, and he's from Four H. He won an award for talking about Four H on the podcast. Really, the wow. Judith Light Award. So we're an award Judith winning. Light wasn't she an actress? Oh, that's that. Yeah, she's from Who's the Boss? Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> oh, sorry. Judith Fairy, excuse okay. me. <laughs> <laughs> Judith, oh boy, Judith Light, Judith Fairy. Yeah, you know, close enough. Close enough. Who's the boss? It's sad that I know that. Yeah. Yeah, Judith Light, but she was, you know, with her, the co-star with Tony your favorite Danza. Your song, Tony Danza. I was about to say, yeah, that, your own John song that you love, Tony Danza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so yeah no great um any other things you like to add about being a deacon i would encourage uh men it's maybe something you can consider um if they have any questions you can reach out to the archdiocese you can reach out to me but there's a, a deacon named deacon james mccormick who is the director of the permanent diaconate diaconate is what you call a bunch of deacons and if it's something you've been curious about i would hope people call him you can find his information on the archdiocese website which is aohct.org and start the conversation with him he'd, he'd love to hear from you uh, just had a class start in september uh, there's a man from west hartford part of it uh, i think everybody knows rick ayala former president of the connor pto dr rick dr rick yep chiropractor podcast guest I was, was he on the podcast podcast number nine i think oh I'm nine saying. and i'm 90 okay great guy great guy and he's he's pursuing it really yep dr rick dr rick is yep he um i don't think i'm saying anything on school hands out do you communion yep so what what do you have to do to what are the steps taken to be able to hand out the, sure. the Eucharist, Eucharist? The uh, to become an extraordinary minister of the Eucharist. People also say Eucharistic minister. You have to usually there's you'll go through a couple hour, two hour class. First, you would talk to your pastor about it, express an interest, and then he will tell you. I hope if he thinks you're capable of doing, if he thinks you're spiritual enough person if you know if you're, if you're in a good place then you would uh go through that training again a couple hours just to handle some of the basics some of the theology behind it and then uh, he, the priest would bless you there's a blessing that could be said and i i'm still getting through this book of blessings i'm not sure if i can bless an extraordinary minister and then um that's it then you one start. day a one day training yep one day training it, it it's typically for people who have been i mean active. dr rick you're really good at it so oh I, yeah I can he hands it. them out like yep and uh then i say thank you and you know he's you, really good well, you, you should you say, say amen it's not thank you it's not thank you <laughs> <laughs> i yeah. laugh because i just posted i was Wait, going do through i, say, I, was do, through, I say thank you <laughs> i was going <laughs> You're not the only person. Bob, that's Bob's fault. A no, confirmation, I, uh, you Bob. Cannot blame, you cannot blame that on Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, we all have Facebook memories, and I just had a Facebook memory pop up from 10 years ago saying that it was the first for me. It was Eucharist. I said, the body of Christ, and somebody said, thank you. I said, so it happened to me about 10 years ago. Oh. still happens to me now. Well, I can say it, at least once or twice a week, and somebody will say thank you. So you're not alone. It happens every Sunday if they hand it to me. <laughs> I will yes. say amen from amen. now on. Amen, yes. I'm supposed to say amen. It's, it's, it's good that you're receiving it. And uh, and is it a wafer? Yes. It's a wheat wafer. They're, they do have a low-gluten wafer. It's just church law that it must be, there must be some wheat in the wafer, which is difficult for people who are, Glucose, gluten free. Gluten free. I almost see. I said glucose, gluten free, and so they. Uh, but we do have a low gluten, which I understand from for most celiacs, it, it's acceptable. And what I would tell people is that the you really only you could break off a little piece of the Eucharist. If you don't have so, to eat the whole thing, don't have to eat the whole thing. No, no, it can be broken off into a little piece, and because the whole Eucharist has the body of Christ is represented in the body of Christ. So and, any part of it. So if you're curious, if, if you're a, have celiac and you've been maybe not going to communion for that reason, you should have a talk to the pastor, the priest about it. And then just break off a little bit, try it. And then hand the rest of the Eucharist to somebody who's with you. The, the priest might even take it back from you and consume it. Because, uh, like, if it gets dropped on the ground, the priest is supposed to pick it up, or the deacon, or the extraordinary minister, and eat it. Hmm. That's, that's how you dispose of it. Pretty much, yeah. 
First mm -hmm. first week as a deacon, I dropped one. Ooh, yeah. Fumble. Costly fumble. fumble. Yeah. yeah, costly. What's the expiration date on those? Because sometimes they're, they're I a feel like... Product. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I feel like one's been sitting out a little bit too long. Okay. Yeah, they're they're like a like any other wheat product, you know. Oh, it's wheat. I never knew. Yeah, it's wheat. Yep, you don't want to let them sit too long. And they're called extraordinary ministers because deacons and priests are ordinary ministers. Hmm. If anybody's ever been curious about that, and probably not because most people call them Eucharistic ministers. So, well, yeah. So that's well, that. Great to talk. Well, um, deacon. Deacon, that's right. Deacon talk. Deacon talk, that's right. Um, thank you again for blessing. We're going to take a break so you can get dressed. We're going to come back. Yes. Or uh, I can remove the vestments, yes, so we can eat. We're going to eat some pizza from okay. Luna Pizza. Great. Uh, episode 70, Alex McDonald. Uh, again, we're on 10 Arapahoe Road. We got new Steph with us. Steph, what do you think so far? Uh, I thought this was pretty fun. I got to learn. I mean, I got my uh, confirmation done like maybe five or six years ago. So okay. I never knew all this stuff about the church. And it was good to hear some new things. I'm not so much religious, uh, really. But, you know, it's good to learn new things about the church. Great. Great. Cool. Well, thank you for being here. Steph's yes. first day. And then we're going to... Um, we, oh, we got to thank Dave. Dave's in the yes. house. Dave from Direct Line Media. None of this will be possible. Dave, how's it feel? 90 episodes. 90 episodes. We got to celebrate. I That's forgot. Right. We usually celebrate. 100's coming up. 100. Yep. We're going to be playing Playhouse on Park. 100 uh, episode. Oh, really? You're, you're, are you doing like a presentation? Like, can people come and watch it? Be oh, done? yeah. Live. Podcast nice. in front of a live studio audience. Very exciting. Episode 50, we did it there. Okay. Came out singing Mr. Rogers. It was great. It was great. Yeah, right, we'll so take a little break. So I can be we'll get some pizza. No pizza stains. We don't want to. Yeah, thousand dollars. You can't have no, yeah. pizza on a thousand dollar vestment. Vestment. V e s t. Vest vestment. M e n t. Yeah, vestment. Yeah. A very educational podcast. Thank you for answering some some of my silly or not so no, silly no, questions. No, but nothing. You gotta silly. ask. Nothing silly. I'm a teacher. I'm, I'm a lifelong I'm learner. The, I'm waiting for the silly questions. I just thought it was silly you didn't know how old you were. <laughs> when you said 28 plus 16, no, 38 plus 16, that was, that, was, uh, that was momentarily scary. You don't learn something new every day. So, today I learned something old, you know? True. This is, it wasn't new, but it's been around for a while. <laughs> I should have known. But no, okay, no, we'll man. take a little break. You're going to keep it running. We'll take a little break. I'll set up the pizza. You're going to take off your Deep vestment. Rest. All right, we're back. Oof. Trying to we're eating a little bit. Try not to bounce this meatball off the mic if I can help it. Thank, thankfully, Keith took off his vestment. That's for sure. <laughs> what do you say, Keith? <laughs> well, I say, oops. <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> I shall wear this stain as a badge of honor. <laughs> Good food. Good, Good stuff. Post. Thank you, Alex. Go see 999 Farmington Road. Avenue. Farmington Avenue. Oh, boy. Now they're going to get lost on the way. Oh. Look at this. Oh, boy. Nice. Mashed potato pizza? Oh, come on. Truly a thing of beauty. Steph's I didn't know they had mashed potato pizza, so I shall be returning. Steph's first podcast. You, you've been blessed, and now you're at Luna. How you feeling? I feel really great, especially with the mashed potatoes. Mm, <laughs> can't go wrong with mashed potato pizza. Never. Check them out. Tell them Feeney sent you. Great comfort food. We're going to make this up right now on the spot. You so, tell, you call and say the code word, be a good friend. Uh-huh. You buy two larges, yep. you get a medium free. Wow. What do you think, Alex? Did he agree to that? He doesn't even know this, but it's going to happen. <laughs> Alex, nine ninety nine. he will okay it. You buy two larges, get a medium free. If you say, be a good friend. Hashtag be a good friend special. The old two large, one medium. And we got some buffalo. I'm trying Buffalo Korean. wings. Yep. Buffalo. <laughs> and we got Korean wings. It's just a nice picture of a black box. But... <laughs> There's the sesame seed, a little yeah. sweet. Yeah. And then, of course, the meatball. I know. One of the best meatballs around. With the Without mozzarella. a doubt. The meatballs. This... I'm taking some home with me. Of course. I'm sure. We only got two orders. <laughs> we only got two orders. My buddy Tim and I. I think we did three or four orders on the podcast. <laughs> Tim was like, these are so good. That's funny. I was like, let's get some more. Tim, <laughs> Seth, Larry, it was a great podcast. 
he runs the, the the motivation center. What's that? Um. Oh, sorry. He helps. Sure. No, journalist no. by nature. I ask questions. Of course, you got to. Um, no, they do um, toy drives, and it's a nonprofit. Pretty, our our missions align. They help children and families that okay. need assistance, and it's in it's in Bristol. Um, nice. Tim has a great story. He was incarcerated. He he learned from his mistakes, and now he's just helping youth and uh, trying to educate and model, and so they don't make the same mistakes. And it's just nice a, a really really good person. Awesome guy. Tim, check it out. Look at that meatball. Crane wing is good. Mm -hmm. I like these sesame. All right, and then you got to look up this guy. It's Nardwar. Nardwar? You know who Nardwar is? Nardwar. I've heard of the name. Is, he, is it like some side of fish or? Nardwar? <laughs> no. Nardwar is a human. He's oh. the human serviet. Human what? Servit. Serviet? Like a dish towel? What's a serviet? Uh, you... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, no. Yeah. All right, so I got some. Like the disposable. Yeah. Yeah. Look it up. Nardwall. He interviews people and he brings up stuff from seventh grade. And the guys, and his, the people he's interviewed get blown away. So I got some Nardwall questions for you. You're oh, going to okay. be blown away. All right. So tell us about the time that you were going to get your motorcycle license. I told you that story. Hey, oh, Nardwar. Wow. Wow. Nardwar. That's amazing. Nardwar. I already got, he's already blown away. <laughs> Nardwar. I might, might even say his name wrong. So, sure, how close um, were you to getting your motorcycle license? Pretty close. Um, I had worked out a deal with uh, Harley Davidson because I'm an auto reviewer, cars, trucks, SUVs. They were trying to get some of us interested in reviewing motorcycles. This was back in 2004. I was 41 at the time. And said, oh, would that be cool to learn how to drive a motorcycle? <laughs> and so all set up, going to take classes over in Ellington. I think it was time it was TSI, Harley Davidson. And was talk with my wife about it, looked down at my wife, who at the time was seven months pregnant. And I'm like, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> Why do I want to get him on a motorcycle with my first child, my first daughter on the way? Mm. And so that's what stopped because it's just too much can go wrong. It's not your fault either. It's just, yeah. uh, I just thought it's a risk I didn't need to take. You can ride the motorcycle in the parking lot true no yeah you can be the best driver but you can't you trust other drivers that's right in this scary world we're trying to start a chuck corsi uh economic development knows you knows yes it, said hi yeah, yeah. says you're former awesome. deputy mayor i think of west hartford wants oh, to have right. a drive like a friend initiative oh okay because people are not driving so nice and if everyone no. drove like a friend that's right we would have less accidents Sure. Yeah, just a little bit of courtesy. And, goes and out of respect way. for motorcycle, a lot of cars don't see them. Mm -hmm. um, or pay, a lot of people aren't paying attention while they're driving. And sometimes motorcycles take... Yep. But, yeah, they, they they bear the uh, the brunt of our ineptitude. So like me, you're also allergic to shellfish. That's right. Yep, I am a cheap date. I don't eat lobster, don't eat shrimp, don't eat crab. But you love paella. But I don't love seafood paella because it's made with shellfish. I like regular paella. I was just having this discussion yesterday with somebody. Where's the agent? <laughs> agent, come on in. There, there's oh, a, come here. There's a come dog here. lapping up water in the background. Yeah, it's come on. Let's see if we can have a special fun. guest. And, uh, come here. Come here. Good boy. Give him a little piece of chicken. Oh, yeah. Come here. Come not, not a bone. Just a little piece of chicken. Oh, you're going to get me in trouble. I don't think a little piece here, of... Here, come here. Look. Turns out he's that turns out he's definitely allergic to chicken. It's not my fault. It's not, not like I blessed him or something. And uh, but uh, paella, which is from the Valencia region of Spain originally, which is where my wife is from, and she will only eat paella from Valencia. She won't even eat it from Madrid or any place else. But it is made with rice, which a lot of rice is grown in Valencia, 
And usually I've had it, I like it best with chicken and rabbit. Ooh. And it's a good good combination. Maybe a little chorizo thrown in sometimes. <gasps> the Spanish sausage. Yeah. Another thing, but yep, yeah, no. I, rabbit. Rabbit, yeah. A little dark meat, but it's, it's a good meat. You have to, uh, yeah, a lot of water involved with the cooking of the rice, right? And the, the crust. Oh, yeah, the yeah. That's, that's rice. Favorite, yeah, get, at the bottom of the, the pie. Alex, uh, not Alex, Xavier Santiago said his grandmother would take all the crusty and ball them up to balls of rice. Crusty, oh. hard balls of rice. Okay. And there was a name for that. You could do that do with that. scrap if you scrape the bottom of the paella bowl. Yeah, yeah. The, um, it sounds delicious, right? It, it is, actually. My brother-in-law, I think that's my brother-in-law, Javi's favorite part of the paella is the uh, that hard rice at the bottom of the pan. Yeah. Really sticking to her, uh, you know, her standards and that she won't eat paella, Manuela. She has. Oh. She has, but yes, <laughs> but typically it doesn't. It says it has to do with the water in the rice. So I, I just, I had a Brazilian paella down at Parkville, Parkville Market. Market. Yep. I had it too. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> that was I was funny. spoiled by the Spanish paella. I bring Bridget to Parkville, and who do we run into? Yeah. That's right. The whole Griffin crew. Was it the whole crew? Was the... Yeah, the whole crew. Oh, oh, Lydia was there too? Yep. Oh, Lydia was there. You're right. I forgot. Yep. She was going to school the next day. That's right. That's right. She Great was home on break. the whole crew, yeah. Huh? And you had the paella. The Brazilian paella. Oh, yes. Brazilian paella. Christina had some sort of, like, noodle. Noodle waffle thing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then, then you guys, we all split a fried dough with apple. Oh, I know. That, oh. Was, that was the best part of the meal. That was fantastic. With yeah. ice cream and whipped cream on it. Snows and doughs. <laughs> Which, perfect segue. Thanks for bringing that up. we like to shout out our newest sponsor, oh. Parkville Management. Nice. Carlos Moda, episode... Yeah couple episodes ago carlos isn't a great person carlos has done a lot of great things for hartford greater hartford he's just a responsible i get impression caring landlord who invests in his properties and i'm sure he could probably make a lot more money but i don't i really no, don't feel that's his only goal in life he is like <clears throat> won't leave hartford he's born not born and raised but he was pretty much raised in hartford he was born I'm in uh, yeah, of course talking, huh? he was born in mazik Mozambique. Mozambique, really? South America, South Africa. Wow. So Carlos, Portuguese background, okay. but born in hey. South Africa, Mozambique. Uh, great person. Yes. We're going to put up a, he's going to, he already okay to be a good friend mural down at Parkville. Really? He's Exciting. A storage unit for Friends of Feeney. Ah. Uh, a fundraiser for fun, Friends of Feeney coming up at Parkville. So be on the lookout. A wonderful um, fundraiser involving hot dogs. And are, you, are you having a hot dog eating contest or something? Oh, yeah. Are you really? <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to have to call you uh, Eric Chestnut from now yes. on? Yes. No, it's going to be a um, hot dog cooking contest. Oh, okay. All of those places yep. are going to put their spin on a hot dog. Oh, wow. And then we're going to have a celebrity judge nice. from judges. Barstool Sports. Are you really? Oh, wow. Okay. I don't want to give too many spoilers. No. Wow. Well, it's going to be great. I think you should have three judges. Yes. Get a couple of them. Well, yourself and get one other celebrity in there. You know, like have your main celebrity. I don't know. Do Javier it. Colon? Maybe. No, he's no. Javier's vegan. Oh, he's a vegan? Last I heard he was vegan. He may not, be, he may not want to do it. Yeah. The hot dogs <laughs> are the farthest thing from. Yeah. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah. You'll find somebody. Somebody will want to do it. All right. And how is, uh, you got your banjo on you? Can you play a banjo <laughs> song for us? I heard no, you really good at the banjo. It's, it's been probably almost, sadly, almost 50 years since I picked up the banjo. And you know what inspired me to play the banjo? Oh, uh, um, Kermit the Frog? <laughs> <laughs> I think I played it. No, I may have played around the same time Kermit played it. No, it was the Waltons. Hmm. And also the, the theme to Deliverance. <laughs> it was dueling banjos. Nice. It was probably another 40 years before I saw Deliverance. Good movie, though. I've yet to see it. 
I have strange. To see. Oh yeah, there's definitely. I never look at Ned Beatty the same again. Is it Warren Beatty or Ned Beatty? Ned. Ned Beatty. Beatty. Yeah. Um, Warren Beatty is a, another actor. That's Shirley MacLaine's brother. What about? All right, we're gonna. He's not trust by that. How think. about your Saint Bernard? Ah, Brandy. <laughs> she was a funny girl. Yes. Uh, parents took us to pick up a pick out, I should say, and pick up a Saint Bernard puppy when I was eight, and great dog. Unfortunately, a mm. little high stressed. I guess it's apparently a problem with purebred. St. Bernard's is that they become very protective of their family and which Uh-oh. means they don't cotton to anybody they consider not family. And when you're a St. Bernard, they're pretty big dogs. My dad was about the same height I am. He's about six foot, but Brandy could put her paws on my dad's shoulders standing so you could tell she was a big dog. And we used to have a screened in porch and we were, we were just telling some of these stories recently. The uh, the gas meter guy wouldn't come in the basement unless the dog was locked on the second floor. Yeah, and I don't blame him. That sounds no. And then we came home one day. Our house where I grew up in used to be a cut through to a local middle school, so kids would just cut down our driveway, take this path through the woods, and get to the school. And we came home one day, and there was a sneaker and a bicycle in the driveway. We said, "Oh, Brandy ate somebody," but no, <laughs> <laughs> Brandy chased somebody out of our yard. So. After that, Brandy was about a year old, and uh, my parents told me that Brandy wanted to live on a farm, <laughs> and I'm laughing because I bought it until I was telling somebody that story one day when I was about 38. I said, yeah, but, so, but Brandy wanted to live on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> it suddenly dawned on me. I, I don't think Brandy wanted to live on a farm. i not sure whatever became of Brandy, but she, she was a good dog to, to the Griffins, but to nobody else. She used to drag my sister for a walk down the street. <laughs> Good old St. Bernard. Yep. I also had a, did you know I had a bloodhound too? With the big floppy ears? Yep, big floppy ears, yep. Bloodhound named Misty. And then what do you currently have? We have two dogs. We have a Yorkie Poo mm-hmm. and a Coton de Tulliar. Oh, wow. A fancy name. D- dumb as a brick. But I... <laughs> I know parents aren't supposed to play favorites, but the Coton de Tulliar Jack, he and I are kind of buddies. Could be because we're the only males in the house, too. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes he he needs his uh, male bonding. Yeah. And like any male, dumb as a brick. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the best thing that ever happened to you in a bowling alley? <laughs> 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 wasn't that time I bowled 280 huh no that no, can't be uh, I guess it would have to be meeting my future wife she came here as a Spanish teaching assistant and a good friend of mine from high school got together a group of people to meet my wife and a couple other teachers who were here from Spain we all went bowling and we didn't particularly no sparks flew at the bowling alley though we just became friendly and she was going back to spain i thought at the end of the school year but then she ended up getting hired to work in one's locks as a spanish teacher for kindergarten kids and the uh, rest is history so once she returned from spain we uh, started dating do you know the first movie we saw uh, Jaws. <laughs> nope. Godfather. What year? It would have been 1997. Oh. But it was actually... Forrest Gump. I think it was... It was 94. It was actually the sequel to my favorite movie. My favorite movie. Oh, wait. I thought your favorite movie is Caddyshack. I'm not sure. Well, it, that's one of my... That's my favorite golf movie. Babe. Was my is still I have to admit still my favorite movie, Babe. Babe about the pig. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great movie. It's your favorite movie. Yeah. A little talking pig it, on I the can farm. St- yep, I can stop and whatever I'm doing if it comes on, I stop and watch it. Babe. 
Babe, yep. Yeah. Is there a Babe 2? It was horrible. I was going to say. And I said the fact that... And it was in the theater? It was in the theater, yeah. I said the fact that my wife then... We weren't dating yet, but that was kind of our first date. So the fact that she would attend that movie and sit through it and still talk to me afterwards yeah, seriously. was a sign that we should start dating. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Babe, Pig in the City. A horrible movie. Wow. Totally trashed to you. <clears throat> That's so like Dumb and, Dumb and Dumber. Mm. Dumb and Dumber is my favorite movie, but the sequel, Dumb and Dumber. Oh, really? Terrible. <laughs> so Dumb and Dumber is... Uh, you know, Rocky. Do you want to hear the Rocky most annoying, five? You want to hear the most annoying sound? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, blow out Stephanie's ear, ears. Yeah. <laughs> Ing. Bird. Yeah. We were having such a sophisticated discussion earlier. No, that's what, <laughs> what happens happened? when you break out the Lunas. Did that's right? Take off the vestments. And then who's Anthony Anderson? My all-time best friend. <laughs> After you, of course. <laughs> Wow, I was just telling this story the other day, too. I used to travel a lot as an auto journalist, like, say, 100,000 miles a year. So I was flying from Hartford to Los Angeles with a connection at Reagan Airport in Washington, D.C. And I didn't get the first class upgrade that I was hoping. But I'm sitting, like, in the second row in coach. So... Nice, good leg room. And the doors to the plane are just about to close. And I've got a middle seat empty next to me. So the person at the window, I'm on the aisle, we're kind of like mentally high-fiving each other. This guy comes walking down the aisle. This flight attendant announces boarding is now complete. He sits down in the middle seat between us and it's anthony anderson star of the great tv show blackish which we enjoyed he was also on law and order he was in the departed he's a black man just to help some people because it's i was telling the story and somebody said Why you originally just i that? thought it was the dude from er with the glasses no no that's anthony edwards and who's this anthony anderson anthony gotcha. anderson yep yep and um so sat down and I said to him and I'm not really going to swear about him so I said who did you piss off to get stuck in the middle seat to get stuck in the middle seat to uh, from Washington to LA and he said they brought me to the wrong airport <laughs> so I said oh so we just did you know who it was yeah oh yep yeah. yeah. knew who it was couldn't think of his name at first I was blanking on his name a little bit but I mean I knew who he was. Like he would, he had just started. In, he was one of the people in the Departed, the Martin Scorsese film. Yeah, great about movie. Boston. Yeah, great movie. Yeah, he played a state trooper. I don't remember that. Yeah, part. he gets murdered. <laughs> one of many people get murdered in that movie. Yeah, how about the elevator scene when one of the stars yeah. gets murdered? That was <laughs> yeah. surprising, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was they said intense. it really, like, jumped the shark and lost all credibility at the end when they showed a rat running. Oh, rolling around in the in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. to show like, uh -huh. what's that word? You know that movie or yeah. How oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, whatever. But yeah, the so, whole movie's about a rat, and yeah, then they ended yeah. by showing a rat. Right. So it was like, come on, I know, come on, Martin, <laughs> you could have done better. He's kind of dialing in. So Anthony Anderson pulls out this gorgeous like Hermes bag leather bag puts it on his lap puts his head down and falls asleep pretty much wakes up in Los Angeles and I, so I said don't really want to bother you I said how did you do that and he said when you sleep when you're on a movie set or a TV set you learn to sleep whenever and wherever you can so I said alright I said do you mind if I get a selfie and so I take out my phone do a selfie he looks at it and goes that's not how you take a selfie grabs my phone positions it perfectly and you got the selfie let's see it Come i gotta on. find it it's because it's like from 10 12 years ago but you gotta favorite it give it a heart i know i yeah uh, got a heart it's it. got to be in the album I'll, favorites I'll, I'll find it for you when it's yours <clears throat> and or, uh, i have a d-list celebrity <laughs> album do you really yeah. am i on it uh oh, not even d 
he was what a shame <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well he would be like a celebrity, celebrity. yeah yeah so now whenever yeah. he whenever he comes on tv i tell the girls oh there's my best friend anthony anderson your, your research is impressive See, like my, yeah yeah i did good research <laughs> i did a good good job thank the friend of a friend <laughs> stina stina that's right stina the seal I don't she know. knows all. And then top five Billy Joel songs. Um, River yeah. of Dreams. Lullaby with Alexa. Uh, moving Out. And I would also say uh, New York State of Mind. And the fifth one. Uh, I can't think of the name. Of- Saturday. <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> Is that not him? No. Is that Ellen John? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've done that so many times. Uh, For some reason, those two... Is that me? Is that, Has that been done before? Well, they toured together, so... Okay. You, you could have made that mistake. Toured together, maybe a couple I times. I saw them together in Hartford. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. Is that you? <laughs> singing singing oh, all the man, old... Oh, that was John's songs. terrible. When uh, Billy Joe was playing. Uh, Piano and, Man? Yep. We Didn't Start the Fire? I, well, I, I won't say that's one of my favorites. There's a song he... Cheesy. There's a song I can't think of the name of it though. He he, uh, about the time he toured Russia, and just talking to a like an old clown. So, uh, the, Vienna, Vienna, bottle is, of red, is red, bottle of white. Yeah, that's Anthony's song. Moving out. Here, and uh, no matter what kind of mood you're in tonight, bottle of red, bottle of white. No matter what kind of mood you're in gotcha. tonight. I knew yeah. that. Yep. yep and yep. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so those those are the top five. Because he had an interesting relationship. His father. Actually, left his mom, moved to Vienna. Moved to where? To Vienna, Austria. Oh, so that's where the song "Vienna," Vienna waits for me. It's actually my cousin lives in probably. Vienna. Nice, Stephanie. Shout out! I got a cousin, Steph. My favorite cousin, Steph, lives in Vienna. Is she your favorite cousin, Steph? As in, you have more cousins named no, Steph? No, she's the only one named. Steph. Okay, all right, all right. Definitely my favorite cousin named Steph. Yeah, <laughs> my favorite cousin that lives in Austria. In, in Austria, a, in a foreign country. <laughs> yep. So, uh, well. Good, Let's good talk about senior research. I, I tell my students writing can take you places, and you got the best writing gig. That I've been fortunate. You get a new car every two weeks. Every week. Every week yeah, they pointing. send you a every car. Week. Yes. And you and then you drive it all around, mm-hmm. and then you just write every little review. Yep. SUVs, trucks, compact cars. Yeah. You, you name it. You've been driving them around since about. 2000 January 2002 so yeah you figure 50 to 60 70 some years 70 80 different cars a year I, I used to For travel 20 years yeah that's why I would travel just to get to try out cars in different places around the country now we so. got to do like what's the most expensive car most expensive car that I have for review for an extended period of time would have been uh, the Lamborghini Murcielago. I had that for a three-day week, four-day weekend. A Lamborghini? Yep, Lamborghini. That that was fun. Uh, Stina, the, who gave us all that information, Stina the Seal, was, um, I had told her, I said, oh, it was a two-seater. So I, I said, oh, don't worry. I said, I'll bring you to school. And it was like Tuesday morning, like, and they were picking up the car. I'm like, oh. So she was in kindergarten, but I, we live across the street from Charter Oak, <laughs> but I still drove around the block and brought her to school, and she was very pleased with that. Did the doors go up like a, or those Ferraris or Lamborghinis? Those were like the scissor doors. Um, no, these didn't have the scissor doors on it. I believe that is the Ferrari. It was Lamborghini, <clears> but I don't remember the Murcielago having the scissor doors. So my wife and I had a date night. We go to a restaurant on the Brown Turnpike, some a nice Mexican restaurant. I pull around back, park the car. Like I said, it's a Saturday night, so the kitchen is busy. A dishwasher comes running out from the kitchen and said, I heard you pull in. He knew that it was Lamborghini, just by the note. So I said, you want to sit inside? He goes, oh. So I sat inside, took some pictures. He was very ecstatic. But that still kind of freaked me out because I'm a fan, but not that level. Very cool. Yeah, but I've. I mean, there's some car guys, gearheads that love their cars. Oh sure, yeah. Like my, I this is how lack of cars I know. Um, 
it's black. I got the Durango black, and the all black Dodge Ram. <laughs> oh, and my post. You're killing me. It's not a Dodge Ram it's anymore. A Ram. I get it. Yeah, yep. they me. got divorced. Sorry. <laughs> um, the the Ram. Yeah. When did that take place, and why? They wanted to focus on Ram as a pickup line, so that's that's why. And nobody could really quite figure out why they did it, but it, they wanted Dodge to be the SUVs and the car at the time and so it was they for some reason some marketing wizard thought it was a great idea no more dodge but ram, but most people ram. like you you own one you still say dodge ram because uh, so yeah but uh the, the mailman comes up he goes mopar or no car <laughs> i looked around i went huh <laughs> i have no clue <laughs> i was like what? What, what i go is this a stick up i go excuse me can you just explain i yeah. said he's like your cars i'm like uh, I still need, <laughs> can you help me out a little yeah. bit? And then I'm like, oh, that makes sense. I got the truck with the leather and it rolls down and on the, it says Mopar oh. on the leather. Nice. And I was like, hey, what's, that's what this means. But Mopar, he, then Postman gives me a full explanation. It's the umbrella is Mopar. Under it is Ram, Dodge, and maybe Chrysler. I don't know. Yeah. There's a couple yeah, other under yeah, the umbrella yeah. of Mopar. But yeah. Not no. afraid to ask the question. No, no, that's good. Even the postman, educate. I learn something new every day. Right. Every they're, they're called letter carriers, by the way. That's okay. Oh boy, <laughs> letter You've carrier. Just irritated half the letter carriers in the, in the country now. Are gonna, you, you will no longer get your mail from a female letter carrier. Oh, and now I got is, a postman for you. It is a well. He at that time he was a postman, but I do have a letter carrier. <laughs> it's a journalist to me. Yeah. So steward, waiter, do you do that? Hostess, host. Oh, oh, sorry. Actor, uh, are they all? I do do flat, actress. flight attendant. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty sometimes of actress. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not very good with that. What were the other examples she said? Steward and stewardess. No, yeah, it's, it's flight attendant. Oh, there's some there, other there's other ones. Police officer. Some people say policeman. Oh yeah, fireman. Fireman, yeah. Firefighter, Firefighter yeah. All these things you have to be very careful about. So yeah, you've had that job for twenty years and fifty cars a pop. At Everybody. least, yeah. yeah <clears throat> some years. Yeah, well, oh, so the most expensive car I ever drove was like an hour was a, a Rolls Royce. That was like four hundred and forty thousand dollars. That was That's it? Four hundred and forty thousand? Yeah, it was it was a beater. It was a Where was this? Pocono. We used to, I used to belong to an organization called the International Motor Press Association, and they would have a test day once a year at Pocono Motor Speedway. So we had the opportunity to drive on the track, which I, was fun, and also they would let us take certain vehicles out on local roads. So the Rolls-Royce representative, who I knew at the time, said, you want to drive it? And I said, sure. So I'm not going to say no. Yeah, and I drove, it, uh, I drove it through some neighborhoods at the time where this car was easily worth five times the value of some of the houses I was driving by. So, yeah, it was, it was kind of fun. Really so that's cool. why I, uh, I, maybe if I, when, not if, when I win Powerball, I might splurge. Don't forget me. Uh, who? Don't forget your son. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> what kind of father would I be? <laughs> that's a funny story. You want to go? <laughs> sure. <laughs> your so son. I was very pleased that i was able to attend the irish dinner where you were honored what exactly were you honored as I you was, weren't the marshal you were I was the honorary, honorary. Of, uh, hartford st patrick's day parade that's right for west hartford for west hartford yep. and there was a nice dinner yep town hall town hall yep eddie carr was the marshal that's right yep eddie and the bird dogs his band <laughs> he's, he's oh that's right yeah yeah and you gave a very moving speech. Um, I want to thank you for collaborating on a wonderful fundraiser at mm -hmm. the New Park Brewery. Uh, you know, we're still it's still in the works. Yes. Yep. It, Ukraine to West Hartford. Yep. Ukraine to Weha. Weha. Yep. We have to work out some issues with dealing with the government with paperwork and things like that. But and the IRIS. What's IRIS stand for? Integrated Refugee and Immigration Services. That's what it is. And. Uh, <laughs> Yes, they're uh, an organization based here in Connecticut that uh, you work with to sponsor 
Ukrainian families, um, and hopefully we can still make it work. If not, I'm thinking if, if we can't help a Ukrainian family through your network, maybe there might be other opportunities to help refugees mm -hmm. resettle. And um, so started working with them. Then there was then there's some paperwork that's been done with the government. There were some issues with that. So hopefully we'll get something resolved. And do it soon. But that was a great event. Regardless, yeah. we raised about five thousand dollars <throat> that night, and then. We've raised like another 1800 or so since then. And then you and I did a hugathon. That was lots of fun. That was a lot of fun. Got to see a lot of folks that celebrate West Hartford. Yep. And we raised about $1,000 of that. So we're sitting on some money. Yeah, we had some good huggers. Marsha uh, McCurdy, yep. Derek Slap, Tammy Axum, Kit yep. Farrar, yeah, we had the... Seth Wickersham, John Merritt. Wow, well, you're much better than I am at this, so. Northwest Catholic teacher. Oh, that's right. And we also, oh, yeah, uh, Chris. Chris. <laughs> Chris Adad, thank you. I'm trying to blank on his name. Uh, Juan Melian Juan was Melian. also there to hug for us, too. Yeah. So we had some good good folks show up there. Uh, Beth Bai was there, former state senator and commissioner of early childhood. Yep. Stopped by and helped out. That's right. So, yeah, we had a nice, diverse crew. And like I said, we did hugs, did fist bumps. Anything, you know, heckled people mercilessly. My <laughs> my daughter was dressed as a banana, which is a logical thing if you're hugging people to dress as a banana. It makes complete sense. I have a feeling she's going to be somebody's Christmas card because she took some pictures with families. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. You're a good guy. I'm glad Thank we got you. to talk. Episode 90. Well, in the books. You know, if you're ever cold, you should stand in the corner. Do you know why? No, I don't. Because it's 90 degrees. Oh, <laughs> now I know why the kids love you. <laughs> Did he get that joke? Yeah. Okay. Or why don't, ever, why don't you ever want to argue with a, a 90 degree angle? Because they're always right. Hey. Hey. Look at you. Yep. <laughs> I always say <clears throat> so you got the right angle, obtuse angle, a Q angle. Yep. If Mr. Feeney was an angle, which one would he be? <laughs> A uh, cute, because he's cute. <laughs> no, well. I'm sure your wife would say obtuse at times, but that's true. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Let's see what else. Oh, I'm looking for these graphics. Yes. Yeah, we got another shout out. Yeah. I like to shout out. We shouted out Keating again. We're on Ten Arapahoe Road. Yeah. Uh, People's Bank, right here on nice. the sale. Sponsor of the the podcast. Used to be part of the post. Used to have half a post office there. <laughs> yep. Post office, People's Bank, right here. Nice. Boom. Chris Kitty and Chris Luck. Ah. Um, one of the best coffee machines. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. Not a coffee drinker. Lattes, oh, it's hot cocos. It's like a, a hot thing, cocoa. You're right. It's like okay. a thing from NASA. You press a button. Nice. Anything you want comes out. Nice. Next time you go by, I'll just say <clears throat> Eric sent me. Say. And if I order two large cups, I'll get a medium free. Yep. Nice. Good to know. Two large lattes, get a medium latte free. They're yeah. all free over at People's Bank. <laughs> but Luna Pizza, you heard it here first. Two larges, get a free medium. We're trying it out. But say, what do they have friend. to say? Be a good friend. That's say, right. be a good friend. That's right. Speaking of being a good friend, let's talk about, I know Manuel is your wife. Yes. What makes her a good friend? Our motto is be a good friend. Pick up trash that's not yours. Hold the door for someone. Be charitable. Um I think what friend. makes her a good friend is that she has, um, she and I share a love of community service. She's a very caring person, very warm. Um, she is at the Faxon Library every Wednesday from 5 to 6, helping people understand their technology. So she gets a lot of Spanish speakers in there who just have questions. How do I use Skype? You know, how do I pay my bills using my phone and stuff like that? So I think that's. Really, what makes her a good friend is that. How many people show up? It's usually one on one counseling for like a half hour. So she'll get Did one from 5 to 5 30, and then another one from 5 to 6. They make an appointment? Six. Yep. Make an appointment online. And through the predominantly branch. Spanish speakers? Yep. Yep. So there's she and another friend do it. He'll, he'll sometimes do the daytime. Did she start ones. that on her own, or did she have someone suggest it, or did she hear about it? I believe she heard about it. 
don't think she started on her own, which when we're watching this podcast, we like, you idiot. Of course, I got it. Probably. And, uh, yeah, it's so, like I said, her love for community service, her love for her family. Uh, she is a true uh, lion, ready, lioness, ready to protect her cubs at all costs and help them turn into good human beings. And just great sense of humor. You know, she put up with me for all these years. 22 years. So. I just celebrated 18. Oh, congratulations. 18. Feels like forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. There was a, a friend of mine who used to own La Perla Jewelers in West Hartford Center, and he would tell this joke. He would say it was a, this gentleman came in to buy a, a special ring because he was celebrating his 75th anniversary. He wanted to get his wife something special for the 75th anniversary. And Bob said, I said to the guy, I said, what's it? Oh, 75 years, that's amazing. He goes, ah, it's, it's like five minutes. So it's like five minutes. And the guy said, yeah, underwater. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like it. But, yeah. use it. No, but I have not used that joke yet to, in any way to describe my relationship with my beautiful wife. It reminds me of Gaffigan has a joke. He's like, oh, shoot. He has five kids. Yep. And they're like, good how? Catholic, good Catholic man, by the way. Yeah, how's it, how's it, you know, someone asks, hey, how's it having five kids? He goes, imagine you're drowning and someone hands you a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it made me think of your joke. <laughs> yeah, so that's like, good. Calf again. You're like my brother. My brother can come up with a joke for any situation. Uncle, Uncle, uh, Un Uncle Neil. Uncle Neil. That's right, yeah. Shout Uncle Neil's Uncle the Neil. man. He's going to watch this, right? Uncle yeah, he Neil. He should, yeah. My I'll girls love Uncle Neil. I know, Uncle Neil. Uncle Neil. He doesn't. He doesn't hold back. He's no. a good friend. He he's a good, good uncle. He's very good uncle. Very generous man too. He's. He has played in both Feeney golf tournaments. Yep. With me, he's a, buys a boatload of raffle tickets. Yes. Missed out on the heckle hole because the I know, guy had to leave. Because we still paid up. We started on. He was on the second hole, I believe. Yeah. You we must started have, on the third hole. So, oh, he yeah, so by the time this. he yeah. got around. We were I think he still paid for the heckle hole, even though it didn't happen. Nice. So. That sounds like him. Very generous. He's been a very Uncle generous Neil's uncle to man. his nieces and their friends. Even yeah, like my girls are like Uncle Neil brought us here. He brought us there. He bought us this. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> time to adopt. Yeah. Right? No, he's a great person. Yes. Is he your only brother? Yeah, I have I had a brother who passed away in the early nineties, but yes, he is. And I have a sister. Oh yeah, I met her. Yep. Very nice. Yep. That's right. Donald Saberk. So, yeah, be on the lookout. You're 90, 89. I did a, a workout with Shauna at Overflow. Oh, nice. Uh, they did the tees at the golf tournament two years in a row, the nice tees. Uh, the, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. the tees on the golf tee. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep, yep, yep. The uh, healthy protein tee. Yep. Um, I speak here. I kind of understood. Yeah. <laughs> no, a lot of people... <laughs> When you talk, when you, when you say, "Hey, did you get the tees at the golf yeah. event?" You automatically assume because yeah, that right. happened every time. What tees? That's what I said. I don't think we got any tees at your golf event. So. See, but we got yeah. tees. Tees. Yeah. What about bear and bear? bear Do you drink bear. bear or the bear in the woods? Do you say <laughs> that different? Beer. Beer, not bear. There's a bear in the woods, and then you drink beer. Okay. Sorry. That's right. Yeah. Oh, but the golf tournament, you. They had teas and teas. No, they had a. They were drinking. What was the, there was one drink that was exceptional. I'm trying to think of the, who was doing it. It was like a. Was it alcohol? Yeah, it was alcohol. Yeah. Drink mechanics. Yeah, that's that's who it was. Yeah. Aaron from Drink Mechanics. Yeah. Great guy. Yeah, it was some good stuff. That they so, yeah. we had the Jello shots. The Dolans did the Jello yep, shots. Yeah. I purposely have learned now to take that day off so i have no responsibilities for church just you just you know yeah don't want to go to want church to get jello shots <laughs> at nine o'clock in the morning so yeah 89 sean at 88 um keith mcgillivary keith mcgillivary from fox 61 had a day at high meadow day camp oh nice keith did archery keith did the big swing keith made pottery oh wow so it's going to be a great podcast it's something different we walked around camp Wow. Uh, up at North Granby. Yep. I'm the program director. So Keith. So I've did, heard. <laughs> yep. Been there. It's going in my 10th summer this summer. Wow. Uh, but it was a great podcast. And then 87 with the Weehaw Shark. 
Was that it? Okay. That's right, because 86 was the Irish singer. Yep. 86 was Mark James. Yep. So the Weehaw Shark. You get the shout out. You're the yes. shark yes. said yes. you're a good shark. Keith yep. Griffin. And he even claimed I had a sense of humor. Yeah. Which was very nice of the shark. The Whoever shark. he or she may be. Yes, the shark. I still do not know. I'm still dying even, to know. You can even put the minute. But I'm not you. spending $200 to find out. Yeah, you can find out. Maybe I'll just, are you going to that dinner? Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll just have your girls tell me when it is. So we could see, then I put right here, Keith Griffin's a good shark. Minute 16. So if you want to just skip That's to right. where Keith gets his shout out yeah. with the shark, minute 16. Nice. Do you want to learn about, you know, the shark's favorite teacher? That's minute 38. <laughs> How Doro got their name? How did Doro get their name? Minute 43. Minute 43? Yeah, you got to listen. At the beginning, you talked about that? 43. Oh, 43 minutes. I'm sorry, I may have skipped over part of it. Um, I looked for my name and it wasn't there anymore. So. Scott Miller, Dorian. So people in the kitchen, when you're in the kitchen, you're Scott, you're Scotto. Dorian was Doro. Oh, wow. And it stuck. I'd be Erico. You'd be Keitho. Nice. Steffo. Steffo, wow. Uh, you know? I just, they just opened in Mothersfield. Yeah. And it's very popular. The old chips pancake. Yep. Place is massive. It's doing well, too. Yeah, they, they are. People People from my parish speak very highly of the food. Oh, of course. And everything. And I speak highly of them as people because they're very generous. They do the breakfast sandwiches yep. at the golf tournament. Yep. They catered the 50th podcast. Nice. Great people. I can't wait for the 100th podcast. So It's going to be fun. January, yeah. save the date. Oh, January, save the date. Save the month of January. Yes, 2024. Also, Toy Drive, December 9th. It's That's a collaborative right. we're doing at Donut Crazy and at Luna Pizza. Oh. So you come bring a toy. There's going to be custom Friends of Feeny Donuts. Nice. You'll get a pizza deal at Luna. Well, if they're still in business after this last pizza deal that you just did. Yes, buy two larges, there's... get one medium free. <laughs> if you say, be a good friend. Thanks, Alex. We'll talk about it after. Uh, Effie's place doesn't Effie's... have ranch dressing. Did you know that? No, I did not. The shark went on a rant. Wow. About what is that with Johnny Panderas? Right. Johnny's one of the best souls in in the universe. He's anti ranch. Anti ranch. Wow. At, at least allegedly from the shark. Oh, okay. The shark went to Effie's that day and said the shark wanted Something. ranch. And someone said, hey, we don't have ranch. And the shark was not pleased. And was it Was it just that day or was it? I think it's all the time. Wow. All right. Well, I, I think that's something that we're going to work on. You have to have Johnny. You should have Johnny. Have you ever heard Johnny in the podcast? No, but we're going to. I would, yeah, I would highly recommend Johnny because he's, he's a good business owner, real you supported that whole Park Road neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Just we a hung good out. person. Uh, Has a boat if you like to go fishing. So. Ooh, they did a comedy show to support the Park Road Parade. Okay. A fundraiser. And Johnny and Tracy, they run the Park Road Association, yep. which recently received an award. So they're doing great things. Yes. Um, Shame the parade got. Again, two years in a row. Got missed it out. For <laughs> missed. Know, it's from rain, yeah. Two years right. in a row, huh? Yep. I forgot. Wow. We must have been busy last year, too. All right. We're going to wrap it up. But first, we're going to do some crazy questions sponsored by Donut Crazy. Love Donut Again, Crazy. Again, Donut I'm, Crazy. Yeah, What's I'm, your favorite donut? I like the... Uh, is it like... It's not It's not a Lucky Charm donut. It's a cereal donut. Oh, yeah. Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles. Thank you. Yep. Uh, instant heart attack. But I, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Any... any And their, their regular donuts are just amazing. Good stuff. Don't they have two brands? They have like the... the dailies and Daily. the crazies. Daily and the crazies, yes. Good I'd, coffee, good egg sandwiches. They have like one that's uh, with the Nutella mm. in the middle of it. It's just simply good. They, they do have one they, with a big thing, a cookie dough on it. Then they have one with... They do the cannoli donuts too, I believe. Yep. Also, it's, um, I'm, I'm, so December I'm 9th, 1 to 4. I hope they're not open tonight. Save your, we'll head over. <laughs> Save your toys. Um, we're going to have some locations set up prior to the toy drive. So if you can't get there on December 9th, there okay. will be a box at Luna. There will be a box at uh, Uber Dog. There will be a box at a couple other places. 
donut crazy. Are you crazy. doing this just like in conjunction with Toys for Tots or anything, or is it just your so own drive? So this helps. No, nope, this is our fourth annual. Okay. And we're helping the Hillcrest community. Oh, great. And, uh, yep. Oh, so you're keeping it in West Hartford. Yep. Which is nice. Yep. Hillcrest, the neighborhood under revival, I would say. I was impressed. Yeah. No, it's great. They have a nice Hannock homework center. Yep. Uh, wonderful students and wonderful families. Oh, that's right. Well, because you they have, go woke it. You have Hillcrest as the woke it. That's right. Yep. Yep. Nice. So love it. It's a great spot. Yeah. All right. Crazy questions. Yes. What would you rather? Would you rather eat cupcakes or cake? <laughs> I'm la- There's a reason I'm laughing at this. I used to do a lot of baking. I used to like to bake things for the kids. And one day we always had cupcake mix in the house. And one day we didn't. I had to go to the grocery store. And I couldn't find cupcake mix. It's cake mix. <laughs> I walked up and down the aisle and asked somebody. And they said, you're looking at it. And I said, what do you mean? I, there's only cake mix here. And so they're like, you idiot. That's how you make cupcakes. So, Put uh, the cake mix in the cupcake. Yeah. Uh, cupcakes, because I think you can do, like I said, from my old baking days. I mean, do like you know pig. the right way to eat a cupcake? Is there a wrong way to eat a cupcake? You have to you you break the bottom. Do off you make a sandwich out of you it? You make the sandwich. Yeah. I may I may be you married. I may be married to somebody who does that. Oh, yeah, hey, that's yeah. yeah, she likes to do that. Yeah, I, I and know I like her. She, woman smart, of many talents, smart minds. Yeah, but uh, no cupcakes because you can. I've made like a pig cake out of cupcakes. Oh yeah, it's kind of fun. So and I then think sometimes I like to take the wrapper. And sometimes I, I like to wipe some of the frosting off. Okay. Too much frosting. So it's that's a quick fix. Thing, Eric. I know, I know. Yes, yeah, so cupcakes. Cupcakes, I agree. Would you rather not sleep or not eat? Not eat. Because I love me some sleeping. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a napper. Oh, naps? Yeah, I love naps. Would you rather eat green eggs or green ham? Huh, same I am. That's right. <laughs> Uh, that's a great crazy question. I'm gonna go with green eggs. Would you rather be a cook or a teacher? A cook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I me just, too. I, I, God bless teachers, but I just don't know how how you do it. Would you rather ride a bull or get stung by a scorpion? Ride a bull. Would you rather be a tiger or a lion? Uh, would I be a cowardly lion? Why, why did I go there first? Uh, a, a lion, I think. They have such great hair. Oh, how did you get to work for WeHot.com? That's not a crazy question, but that's I a know. good question. Somebody asked that? Wow, I'm yeah. impressed. With, with... I put I put your picture up on the board. We talked about how you send you car. I try to encourage the students to write. Yes. So I hand out free write books, and we have something called a magical mailbox where oh. you, you submit... Or they just free write. So I'm like, this guy writes and gets a car every week. I, I said two weeks. Two weeks, well, that's, yeah, that's fine. So I try to encourage them, like, listen, you can go out and drive cars. I know. For free. For free, yeah. The free part probably didn't mean anything. Like, uh, Weehaw.com, it's through a longtime association with Ronnie Newton. Um, I used to be editor of a magazine called Living in West Hartford which was mailed to households with incomes in West Hartford above $150,000. And this was back in 2001, 2002. So pretty substantive amount of money. And she came to work for me as a freelancer. So the, I, I'm not sure if that was her exact start, but it was pretty close to... So just Ronnie and I have stayed friends. Um, I'm also friends with the... One of the owners of Weha.com. What's his name? Bob Carr. Yep. Yep. I know him. Yep. I'm and just trying to find him. and uh, so that's that's a, that connection. Uh, plus, I've had a long. Uh, I got I got the episode. Ronnie Newton was a guest. I have dropped a, the, I, I want to drop the number, but yeah, go that's back because right, you had the list. And uh, uh, she. Uh, oh, I've been I've had a long time experience as a journalist in West Hartford. I was out of the West Hartford News for five or six years. Did you get your journalism degree at Marist? No, I studied English at Marist because I was encouraged not to study journalism because you'd come out of college being trained in that college's journalism style. 
mm-hmm. and you'd have to go work for a newspaper at the time when, when we had newspapers and you would uh they have to retrain you so instead they encourage people to study writing so i studied uh english non-fiction and fictional writing no good good question we had dot com yeah very impressed would you rather drink lemonade or juice another Lem- lemonade another yeah. Cake or cupcake question. That's wow. popular. Would you rather ride a horse or a camel? I've done both. And I've never been thrown by a camel, but I've been thrown by a horse. I was horseback riding when I was 16. and We were on a trail, and my horse stopped suddenly, and the horse behind my horse bit it on the butt, <laughs> which made, made my horse rear up. The saddle flipped over, and I got landed flat on my back. Ooh, ouch. So, yeah. So that's why I'm gonna go with camels. Yeah. Oh, that, that's but I also rode an Icelandic horse once too in Iceland. So that was a little bit more mellow. And as my brother likes to point out, that poor horse was like two days away from retirement, <laughs> <laughs> and then he had to bear me as a beast of burden. So. Did you ever write a book? No, but I've edited books, and one of the books I've edited was the 50th anniversary of the Cannon Greater Hartford Open. Oh, nice. It's a professional golf tournament that comes to Hartford every year. So That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that was Do you get, of, you get credits for that? Yes. Yep, I'm listed as editor. I got to, via fax, I got to interview Arnold Palmer. Ooh. So that's one of my favorite memories because his first tournament victory ever was at the Insurance City Open, 1958, I believe. In Hartford? In Har- well, Wethersfield. Yeah, it was at what, it, tournament started at Wethersfield Country Club. And then uh, in the 80s, moved to Carmel. No way. Yep. Way. And then it was the GHO, then it was the... Yep, Insurance City opened, then the Great Hartford opened, then the uh, Sammy Davis Jr. Great That's Hartford right. opened. That's and right. then for a while, it was the Sammy Davis Jr. Cannon Great Hartford opened when Cannon stepped in as sponsor. Or maybe Cannon, Sammy Davis. And then Cannon became the sponsor. Then Buick. It was a Buick tournament for a short while. And then Travelers. Hmm. So now it's the Travelers Championship. Come what on. are we on? What minute? Uh, we're on minute. We're on hour one and minute fifty-five on this recording. Oh, we're on well, two hours. There, there is a there is a huge gap gap where I am changing out of vest. Okay, I'm okay. Pizza on myself. So oh two yeah, hours. you had the break and all. Yeah, I'm hopefully like that'll zoned get cut. in on this uh, audio. So right. I've just been looking. And down. do you click back and forth based on the audio? Uh, I are you controlling the cameras? Uh, I can see the camera on this screen right here, so I, you know, go back and forth. So when I'm talking, you you press a button to to show me, and when he's talking, you press a button to show him. No, that's done in like post in the editing. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Oh, wow. I knew that. I knew that. Just testing you. You passed. <laughs> it's your first day. First day. First day. You're, You're doing great. back tomorrow. You're doing great. She's a keeper, Dave. All right. <laughs> Do you <laughs> like potatoes? This guy likes potatoes. Oh, of course. We Did have you... great. Mashed potato pizza, Florida mm, pizza. Mashed potato pizza. And I hear pizza. if you order too large and say be a good friend, you'll get a medium free. You heard it here first. That's right. You heard what Keep just yeah. said. Have you ever swallowed a tooth? <laughs> yes, I believe I have. Yep. This kid has swallowed a tooth. Yeah. Do you ever eat mustard on a spoon? No. I can't say I ever have. Do you ever eat flowers? Flowers? Yes, I believe I have eaten a flower or two in my day. Because sometimes they get mixed in with salads. They'll have flowers. How many digits of pi can you recite? Pi. Two. <laughs> 3.14. <laughs> that was good. So, This kid knows it like 10. There is a neighbor of mine who could take it out to 98. 98 numbers? Yeah. Like, oh my. Yeah, she was pretty amazing. And then I got to ask, do you like pizza that tastes, would you rather have pizza that tastes like ice cream or ice cream that tastes like pizza? Well, you've seen my ability to eat pizza, so I'm the same way with ice cream. Um, wow, that's pizza that tastes like ice cream, or uh, wait, pizza that tastes like ice cream, or ice cream that tastes like pizza? Yeah, either or. Which one would you rather eat? Pizza that tastes like ice cream, or ice cream that tastes like pizza? I think I, I'm intrigued by the ice cream that tastes like pizza. Ice cream that tastes like pizza. And I hear if you go to Luna's and order two <laughs> pints, <laughs> you get a free cone. Huh? You Luna Pizza, two larges get a free medium. Alex is gonna love us. <laughs> Alex McDonald, I love this guy. B 
be a good friend. Say be a good friend. Be a good friend. Tevin makes the pizzas up there. He's awesome. The whole crew is awesome up there. Alex, thank you so much. We had baked potato pizza. We had buffalo wings. Yes. We had Korean Korean. wings. We had meatballs. The Korean wings. I've never had those before. They're amazing. You're going to go back. We'll double date at Luna, too. Sure. Okay. All right. We'll buy two larges. (laughs) Get a medium free. Give to the girls. (laughs) They'll be very happy. (laughs) <laughs> I have a wonderful chat. We learned about being a deacon. Yes, we thank you for the that opportunity. We learned about the importance of writing. Yes. This podcast has been blessed. Yes. I feel like this is the first day of the rest of my life. You have your holy water for your Ram holy pickup truck now? The Ram. That's right. I have one in the Durango, thanks to Grandma Jean. Yes. And now I have one for the Ram. Now I have holy water for my keychain. Yep. We asked questions. We talked. Uh, do you have any questions? Closing remarks, parting words of wisdom. No, uh, but thank you for the opportunity. It, it's it was a great pleasure being able to speak about my faith. I really enjoyed being able to bless the podcast. It just I always have fun when I'm with you, so it was nice just to have a couple of laughs and some great pizza and some other great food. Yeah, but thank you for this. Lots of fun. Episode ninety. Keep on the nice. lookout. Toy drive, December 9th Podcast, January twenty twenty four. Uh, podcast 100 live yes. audience hopefully at playhouse on park thank you to dave and steph from direct line media thank you to ryan michael and Mora at keating agency That's on right. 10 arapahoe road thank you to people's bank the fix iv brook golf insurance west hartford lock that's right parkville Mark- management oh, management sorry parkville management our newest one carlos, carlos yes good and man. then on three we'll say be a good friend one two three be a good friend oh damn dude get that